a woman would have been very glad to have men on the scene who would take care of her because without them, you know, it's either a life of prostitution or you're on your own. It's almost a death sentence. Could the fact that the Bible was written by a male-dominated ancient world have influenced how God revealed himself? How will a female God have come across to ancient Israel? That's a worthwhile question. I mean, revelation involves condescension. So, you know, God is, is condescending to us to reveal himself to us and to the biblical writers. And, and it, it might make sense and it probably does, you know, for, for God to present himself this way. You know, how, how biblical writers would have reacted to something different. Again, we don't know because we're not told. Again, we're, we're, not, we're not just speculating here and calling it teaching. Uh, we, have, we have no idea because we're not told. Chances are, I, I, think, I think that the... I think they still would have paid attention, especially if the deity would have done something spectacular or threatening. <laughs> They're still quite capable of getting attention um, and showing superiority. But again, we don't have any examples, so we wouldn't know. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense that God presents himself as a king, as a father, as a patriarch. Yeah, look, look at the metaphors that are used, you know, king, father, priest, You know, prophet. I mean, some of, the, some of these, you know, you, you, have, you have female prophetess, prophet, prophetesses. You know, so some of the, the metaphors aren't as good as others, but, you know, you get these, these God is a warrior, you know, these military metaphors or the kingly metaphors. They're going to conform and do conform to your, your typical male roles uh, in Israelite society. By the way, if you're, if you're a woman in this society, Who takes care of you and who's your protector? Male figures. This isn't like an inherent threat either. Uh, an Israelite woman would be, would be thankful to be surrounded by Israelite men because they are her protectors, they're pro her providers. This is just the way that that, that culture worked. Um, it's, it's male dominated, which you know, we look at and we can pick at because we, you know, our culture doesn't operate the same way. But in, in Israel, you know, a, a woman would have been very glad to have men on the scene who would take care of her. That's what they're yeah. supposed to do. That's their natural role. Because without them, you know, it's either a life of prostitution or, you know, you're on your own. It's, it's, it's like it's almost a death sentence, you know, to not well, be part of the home. Uh, By the way, in, 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 the, in the Awakening School of Theology, which there's my hat for the Awakening School, Um, in second year, in the second year apologetics course, one of the, in, in the Old Testament apologetics course uh, for the second year there, but there's really a, a quite a good treatment by Carol Myers, who's a, a very famous uh, woman, biblical scholar and archaeologist, who really questions a lot of this uh, feminized hermeneutics um, in in, in in biblical thinking and biblical scholarship. And, it, and it's because, again, her, her main argument is that, look, women of the day would have understood this. They, they wouldn't have run around critiquing it. And she's right. She's absolutely right. And, and you know, I think we, we, we kind of lose sight of that. <laughs> 